Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about the benefits, dosage, and side effects of ginkgo biloba. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, my name is Zach Allison and welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based approach to supplementation and nutrition. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit that red subscribe button that's below this video, as well as that thumbs up so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. All right, guys, so ginkgo biloba is more than likely the most popular supplement that is consumed worldwide for brain health and for good reason. It also happens to be the most well-researched natural compound in regards to cognitive health and brain health. Now, it has been traditionally used in ancient Chinese medicine in order to combat uh, the age-related effects on cognitive decline. But interestingly enough, it is now one of the very few natural compounds that holds uh, pharmaceutical drug status in several countries right now. Now, in this video, we're going to be focusing on the number one uh, health benefit of ginkgo biloba, which uh, again happens to be uh, the most well researched effect of ginkgo, uh, which is its benefit to cognition. Now, because it is the most researched uh, compound in regards to cognitive health, we are going to spend a significant chunk of this video discussing kind of the nuances um, of how ginkgo biloba uh, interacts with the body as well as the mechanisms that are, are at play in its ability to improve cognitive function. Now, ginkgo biloba has been shown in several different clinical trials to slow cognitive decline, improve short-term memory in healthy adults, improve attention span in youth, improve immediate and delayed word recall, improve processing speed and accuracy in some populations, and improve reaction time in some populations. Now, one of the big things to note here is that ginkgo biloba does have some evidence in uh, improving cognitive function in not just elderly populations, but also in youth as well. Now, I will say that some of those uh, research papers are a little mixed. Uh, there are some uh, studies that have also shown no effect in youth. So I think the jury is still out on ginkgo biloba's ability to improve cognition in healthy young adults. However, it is somewhat promising. Now, one of the primary mechanisms of ginkgo biloba, which is kind of obscure because it's one of the only known compounds to do this. However, it has been shown to, um, to inactivate and block a receptor known as the platelet activating factor receptor. Now, when this receptor is activated specifically in the central nervous system um, and in the circulatory system, it uh, has the tendency to improve blood circulation, which happens to be another one of ginkgo biloba's uh, health benefits. It has been shown to improve just general circulation throughout the body, but it's also been shown to improve uh, specifically cerebral circulation. Now, by ginkgo biloba's ability to block that receptor, it also kind of downstream um, of that receptor also has the capacity to improve glutamate release from neurons, which um, glutamate is a neurotransmitter in the body that is uh, known to just improve general stimulation and is also highly involved in the formation of new memories as well. Now, ginkgo biloba also seems to have some level of improvement of dopaminergic function in the body, which simply put means that it helps to improve the function of dopamine in the brain and in the central nervous system. And the mechanisms here are likely twofold. One is it has been shown uh, to kind of raise just general levels of dopamine in the prefrontal cortex, which is a region of the brain that's um, highly involved in decision making and planning and um, a lot of different other kind of executive functioning skills. But ginkgo biloba has also been shown to be highly protective of dopaminergic function in specific regions of the brain as well. Now, ginkgo biloba also seems to inhibit an enzyme known as uh, acetylcholinesterase, which is an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine uh, in the brain. And acetylcholine is 
extremely functional in its ability to improve memory formation in the hippocampus um, and is one of the kind of the primary uh, neurotransmitters that a lot of individuals try to increase in order to improve memory formation and is also one of the primary ways by which doctors try to initially treat uh, cognitive decline as well as Alzheimer's disease. So by ginkgo biloba being able to inhibit this enzyme, it also uh, theoretically increases acetylcholine levels in the body and it also seems to have some other pro-cholinergic effects that uh, don't seem to be super, super strong. However, they do seem to be playing a role uh, to some degree in ginkgo biloba's ability to improve uh, just general cognition. Now, another one of ginkgo biloba's preliminary health benefits in regards to cognition is that it also seems to be fairly reliable at improving neurogenesis as well. Now, most of the studies that have been performed um, in order to kind of assess uh, ginkgo biloba's ability to improve neurogenesis have been performed in rats at this moment, but again, it does seem to be fairly promising, especially when you back up these studies in rats with the the human studies that have also shown that ginkgo biloba has the ability to raise uh, some neuropeptides like nerve growth factor as well as brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It does seem that ginkgo biloba is um, a fairly promising agent when it comes to initiating and helping to initiate neurogenesis in the central nervous system um, as well as in the peripheral nervous system. Now, another possible mechanism that may or may not be playing a major role here is that there is some preliminary evidence in rodents at this moment uh, that suggests that uh, ginkgo biloba might actually improve mitochondrial function of nerves as well. Now, the exact extent to which this is playing a role in ginkgo biloba's ability to improve cognition isn't really known yet. However, this is a mechanism that I have been becoming fairly increasingly interested in. Now, there are a few other health benefits of ginkgo biloba that I do think are worth mentioning. Ginkgo biloba has also been shown to improve mood, improve antioxidant enzyme profile, improve uh, blood circulation, which we've already mentioned, uh, reduce inflammation, uh, improve sleep quality, improve response to stress, improve visual acuity, as well as improve skin health. Now, again, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on these. However, I did think they were uh, worth mentioning. Now, when it comes to dosage, most of the research that has been performed uh, has used a dosage range of anywhere between 120 milligrams to 360 milligrams of a standardized extract. Now, there are several standardized extracts, and uh, there isn't a ton of research at the moment on comparing the different effects of these extracts, but I would say that it would be prudent to avoid a non-extracted ginkgo biloba just because those tend to uh, kind of cause some stomach upset. Now, when it comes to side effects, uh, one of the kind of primary side effects, I won't even necessarily call it a side effect, but something to look out for in future research, um, is that it does appear that ginkgo biloba has some type of estrogenic activity. Now, its estrogenic activity is fairly complicated because it has been shown to improve um, estrogen metabolism and excretion, which is a positive, especially for individuals um, with, say, like a history of breast cancer or high levels of estrogen in general. However, uh, ginkgo biloba has also been shown to have some level of phytoestrogenic activity. And so it's not super clear if the estrogenic activity of ginkgo biloba is pro-estrogenic or anti-estrogenic, but I would say that there are some studies that are associating ginkgo biloba with an increased risk of breast cancer, which lends me to believe that there may be some slight estrogenic activity of ginkgo. Now, some studies have also shown uh, that ginkgo biloba may kind of decrease uh, numerical working memory, and so it's not super clear at this moment what specific aspects of cognition that ginkgo biloba uh, interacts with, but it doesn't appear that ginkgo biloba causes a, a kind of blanket improvement of all aspects of cognition. It does appear that there are specific aspects of cognition 
then it has the ability to improve while possibly decreasing other aspects of cognition. Now, there have been some other studies that have also shown some uh, tolerance that does develop with ginkgo. So uh, I do think that cycling ginkgo would be fairly prudent just to avoid the possible tolerance that comes along with taking ginkgo over a long period of time. Now, I will also say that uh, ginkgo does appear to be fairly synergistic with compounds like phosphatidylserine uh, as well as Panax ginseng, which are uh, two other pr very promising cognitive enhancers that I have personally um, integrated into my personal uh, nootropic stack. But all in all, I do consider ginkgo one of the more foundational compounds when it comes to developing a supplement stack for cognitive health, simply because just the breadth of evidence that we have, as well as its synergism with some other well well-known cognitive enhancers. And because of this, I do like to put ginkgo on a fairly short list of compounds that, uh, that I like to take for cognitive health and brain health. But other than that, guys, that's all I have for you today. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much.